A particle p moves in a straight horizontal line such that its acceleration at time t seconds is proportional to 3t squared minus 5. So if a is proportional to this, we can write that as an equation. a is equal to some proportionality constant times 3t squared minus 5. And then in the next sentence, we're told that given that at time t is equal to 0, p is at rest, so the velocity is 0. It's at the origin as well to start with. So that means that the displacement from the origin is 0 to begin with. And we're also told that when t is equal to 3, the velocity is 3. So t is 3, v is 3. And then for part a, we're trying to work out the acceleration of p in terms of t. So we know the acceleration already is k times 3t squared minus 5. So this is not going to be our final answer. We're going to want to work out what k is. But from what we have here, we don't have anything involving acceleration. So we can't just put in a time value and a corresponding acceleration into this equation to work out what k is. But we do have information on velocity, and velocity is the integration of acceleration with respect to time. So what we could do is we could integrate this equation here, find out what velocity is, put in our numbers, and then hopefully work out what k is from that. Okay, so velocity is the integral of k times 3t squared minus 5 with respect to t. And the k just stays in front. It's a constant multiplied by the whole thing, so that just stays in front. The 3t squared integrates to make t cubed, and the minus 5 integrates to make minus 5t. And then we will have a plus c because this is an indefinite integral, so we will have to have a integration constant. Okay, so then we can put in these things here. Let me write out my equation first. So v is now equal to kt cubed minus 5t plus c. So we can put in t is 0 when v is 0. We end up with 0 is equal to k multiplied by 0 minus 0. These two terms are 0 and then plus c. And that will mean that c is 0. Similarly, we can put in t is equal to 3, v is equal to 3. 3 is equal to k times 3 cubed, which is 27, minus 5 times 3, minus 15. And this is the same thing as 3 is equal to 12k, and then we end up with k is equal to 1 over 4. So if k is 1 over 4, our acceleration is a quarter 3t squared minus 5. And now for part b. So we have show that the displacement of the particle is given by this equation here. Okay, so let me write that down. So we have s is 16th. This is what we want to show. t squared, t squared minus 10. Yeah, okay. So that's what we want to show. So we can work this out by integrating the velocity equation. Integrating velocity gives you displacement. Our velocity equation was, I don't think we wrote it out. We have this, v is equal to what we have here. And then we worked out that c was 0, and we worked out that k was a quarter. So we can put all of those things in. So v is then equal to a quarter multiplied by t cubed minus 5t c is 0, so plus c is 0. So that's our velocity equation, and then we can work out displacement. So displacement is the integral of, I'll multiply this out, t cubed over 4 minus 5t over 4. So this then becomes t to the 4 divided by 4 again, so 16, minus 5t squared divided by 2, so this becomes divide by 8. And we have a new integration constant. I'll call that plus d. Maybe not d, just so it's not confused with distance. Let's call it, I don't know, b. I don't want to use c again because we've already used c back here. OK, so then now we want to work out what our proportionality constant is. Remember that we were told that we started at the origin. When t is 0, the particle p is at the origin. 
So when t is zero, s is zero, we can use that. Put that into this. So if t is zero, when s is zero, well, that will therefore mean, if we put that into this equation, that b is zero. So our equation is then t to the four over 16, five t squared over eight. Now we want to get it in this form here. So I'll take out t squared to begin with. t squared, we're left with t squared over 16 minus five over eight. And then we wanna take out one over 16. So to make that a little bit easier, I will make a common denominator. So t squared, t squared over 16 minus, so times top and bottom of the fraction by two, this becomes this. And then we can factorize. Finally, this becomes t squared. Take out a 16th, and we are left with t squared minus 10.